Hello and welcome back to SciTi Tech. In this video, I'm going to share how to combine indium and gallium to form a liquid metal which melts at a very low temperature to form a eutectic alloy. Let's get started. <laughs> I have right here some fully solidified gallium and I have right here some contaminated indium. How the indium got contaminated is that I was storing the two together to save for a future video by placing this gallium on top of the indium just like this and apparently the gallium could manage to seep through two layers of plastic and then contaminated the indium which then caused it to be discolored and more brittle. This right here is what indium looks like that's pure without any contamination. And you can see the color difference is completely different. And it also caused the indium to become more brittle. Here are some really interesting things you can do with indium. It's such a soft metal, you can even cut it with some scissors. Or if you want, you can even bite into it. It resembles like beeswax. Indium can also be cold welded because indium does not react with air, so there is no oxide layer. And since indium is such a soft metal, it can deform very easily. And why it sticks together is because indium's crystalline structure can be deformed and interlocked with each other, which then makes it very difficult to separate again without having to cut it first. Now with this piece of indium that has been contaminated by gallium, loses all of its original properties that indium usually has. As you can see, it's more brittle I can break it apart with my finger. It won't deform, it'll just break. And cold welding is impossible. It will not cold weld because the crystalline structure has changed and caused the indium and gallium to form differently. Which then, as you can see, rubbing it together will cause it to break instead of cold weld. And when I'm holding this metal, it doesn't feel soft like indium does. It actually feels a little bit more hard, but more brittle. And now I'm gonna go and collect all the fragments, put it into this bag so that way I can weigh it on the scale. And as you can see, it's still 20 grams. And then the pure gallium is also 20 grams. I want to see if this works by mixing two of the equal weights of both metals to form the eudectic alloy. So here we go. Instantly. That makes sense because when you combine indium and gallium, the crystalline structure between the two metals gets rearranged into a random order, which then causes it to remain a liquid and lower the temperature. Same concept if you were to add salt and ice, it also lowers the temperature and forms a liquid. I find that very interesting. And as you can see, it's 87.2. That's the ambient temperature. Celsius, it's 30 degrees. Now let's go ahead and mix both of the metals together to form the eutectic alloy. Even colder and colder. Right here, where it's coldest. degrees 23 degrees Celsius it dropped down 7 degrees 73 point Celsius. Sixty-nine point six. Wow. Yeah, really, really cold now. As the reaction continues, it gets colder and colder. Twenty.
that's liquid into my little vial here. As you can see it just pours in. That liquid metal right here. And now I've placed the rest of the partly melted metal inside of the vial and I'm running hot water inside of it just to speed up the chemical reaction so that way the two metals can be able to combine better. And I'm taking measurement of the water just so I can see how hot the water is compared to the temperature of the metal to see if the metal is the same temperature as the water. And there, as you can see, it's almost the same temperature as the water, but it's still slightly cooler. I find that very interesting. Could this be used as a coolant? Maybe. Now, as you can see, I've spilt some of that uh, indium and gallium metal mixture. And I'm going to take my multimeter and I'm going to see if I can actually set it to the continuity testing. And I want to see if this is conductive. Not. I can measure resistance. Well, there's a tiny little drop right here. Yes. Conductive, but the smeared on liquid doesn't seem to be connecting. Maybe it doesn't work on wood. Well, that was a tiny experiment I wanted to see. Now you may be wondering how do I clean up this lund uh, this uh, this mess on, my, on this piece of wood? Well, I have my laundry detergent that you use for removing grease off from dishes. Some of my hot water. I'm going to take a paper towel, dip it in my hot water first, get the area a little warm and wet. This has a lower melting temperature than gallium, so this should actually wash up pretty easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. As you can see, it's already picking up on the towel. since I touched some of the liquid drops that I found on there, which that, the liquid drops is more conductive than the smear. Because I haven't tested to see how corrosive this is, and if I'm doing electronics with my multimeter, I don't want to contaminate things accidentally. There we go. Cleans up just like that. Okay, so now I have my beaker here, and I'm going to go ahead and take my liquid metal alloy, my eutectic metal, and as you can see, right here, and I move it like this, and I rotate it even like this, the metal is not sticking, not sticking to the plastic, which means this mixture here stays perfectly liquefied and it does not like to wet the glass. If I poured it, if I poured pure gallium in here, it would wet the glass or wet the tube. Like this tube here. This tube here is pure gallium and see how it's all stuck on the sides? I liquefied it the same way I did with, with using this glass of water, hot water and putting the gallium inside to be able to liquefy the gallium. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pour this liquid into the beaker because I've noticed 
that even though I set this in this glass here of hot water for about two hours almost and coming back every 10 minutes to reheat the water, I notice if I look very carefully right here, there's a chunk of indium. So it's not fully dissolved, which means my ratio of getting the uh, liquids together to be able to make one liquid, uh, the weights weren't fully accurate. So I'm going to need to add more gallium. And I have this little chunk of gallium that I'm going to go and rub it in there with that to make more liquid like I did previously. So let's go ahead and see how this liquid looks when I pour it in. Okay, so let's go ahead and pour this in. completely empty and it's almost completely unwetted and now you see the glass got a little wet from the glass being cold and this liquid metal here and it does still wet the glass why they use liquid gallium to make mirrors. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and get those chunks out. All of the remaining indium is removed and now I'm combining it with some more gallium. And as you can see, this metal comes out perfectly and it's perfect. I can feel the density. It's cold and it has its density to it. It feels like gallium. It feels like pure gallium, but it's actually much heavier because of the indium. And it pours out much better than gallium does. As you can see it wets my hand a little bit. Kind of like what gallium would do, but it's not as bad. Still left a little residue, but if I did that with uh, gallium it would leave more of a residue. So the difference is interesting, but overall you found a quantity, I can't successfully make 50-50%. I was only able to make it be unbalanced to make the proper uh, alloy, so I had to add more gallium in order to dissolve the leftover indium, and there was indium crystals in there that wasn't dissolved. So then I had to add more gallium to be able to dissolve it, and that gave me a ratio of no longer 50-50%. Now it became 35% indium and 65% gallium. So that's the uh, ratio I was able to get added to a series I'm going to do with liquid metals, and I'm going to do future videos with liquid metals to see how each liquid metal freezes at different temperatures, and melts at different temperatures, boils at different temperatures, and do all the different sorts of different experiments, and compare density as well. So there you have it. Making liquid alloy of indium and gallium. Thank you for watching SciTai Tech. I hope you learned something new, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTai Tech videos. 
So thank you for watching SciTech. Till the next tech. Goodbye.